At the dawn of the 20th century, America was booming. The demand for lumber led to the destruction of over 100 million acres of forest. Fashion trends led to the killing of over 5 million water birds every year, just for their feathers. The American buffalo, more than 20 million strong, had been reduced to under 1,000. The North American wilderness was under attack and disappearing at an alarming rate. That's when President Theodore Roosevelt set in motion a plan to protect wild spaces and creatures for future generations. These are our national wildlife refuges. This is where the adventure begins. Hi, I'm Peter Schremer. Have you ever been to a pond that was surrounded by tall cattails? A place where you could hear frogs calling, blackbirds singing, or watch herons hunt for fish? Well, the place we're exploring today is like that, but on a much bigger scale. At 33,000 acres, this is the largest freshwater cattail marsh in North America. Welcome to Horicon National Wildlife Rescue. Found in America's Midwest and Eastern Wisconsin, Horicon Marsh is unique in that it's cooperatively managed by both the federal and state governments. The northern part of the marsh is operated by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as Horicon National Wildlife Refuge. The southern portion is managed by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources as Horicon Marsh State Wildlife Area. Horicon Marsh is a wonderful place for families to visit with a phenomenal hands-on explorium, spots to view wildlife, miles of trails and boardwalks, an auto tour, boat tours, and engaging educational programs. With so much to see and do here, it's hard to know where to begin. So we're gonna start down on the south end of the marsh in the state wildlife area. It's a perfect place to begin our journey here at Horicon Marsh. This is the Horicon Marsh Education and Visitor Center. Make sure you get a photo in front of the big woolly mammoth statue and see what birds you can spot across the marsh before heading inside. There's no better place to have a hands-on interactive experience learning about the history of Horicon Marsh than the incredible Explorium downstairs. Journey back in time to walk through the Ice Age. Learn how people turned the marsh into the world's largest man-made lake in the 1800s, how it was then dredged and drained in an attempt to turn it into farmland, and how it was finally restored to the amazing marsh we have today. You'll also learn how different water birds search for food and what their calls sound like. You can also experience what it'd be like to become the size of a water bug in the marsh. After all that, you can wrap up your tour with a fun airboat simulator to see what biologists do to travel through the marsh as they study its plants and animals. This simulator is a lot of fun, but now it's time for us to join one of the refuge biologists on a real airboat to see what it's like when they go out to survey the marsh plants and animals. The refuge staff use the airboat to survey the populations of the wildlife living here in the marsh as well as the plant life. They're also able to control the water levels in different areas to encourage habitat for different species. And by doing this, they help create a healthy balance in the marsh ecosystem. Marshes are amazing places to explore and study. One of the main and most obvious plants out here in the marsh are cattails. They are found all across the world and are very important wetland plants that provide food and homes for many species of wildlife. Cattails have strong roots called rhizomes that spread out and grow new shoots. This allows them to grow and spread very quickly in a marsh environment. Their name comes from the iconic cat tails at the ends of the shoots, which actually start out green in the spring. 
By the end of summer, the cattails have been pollinated and the tails turn brown and produce tiny seeds that are surrounded by cattail fluff. Now this fluff is designed to spread the seeds in the wind as it blows across the marsh. We're talking about a lot of seeds. One cattail can produce 300,000 of them. In fact, the cattails spread so fast that refuge biologists have to manage the population of cattails in the marsh in order to maintain areas of open water for birds and spaces for native wetland plants to grow. Cattail plants can grow to almost 10 feet tall, which means they provide great places for wildlife to live in and hide from predators. One species that's most famous for this is the red-winged blackbird. You can usually tell that you're coming near some cattails just by hearing their well-known call. Male red-winged blackbirds are jet black with bright red shoulder patches that are edged with yellow. The females look totally different, with brown patterns to help them blend in with the cattails. Blackbirds build their nests deep within clumps of cattails by weaving together vegetation and strips of cattail shoots on the vertical stalks. Male blackbirds will fiercely defend their territories during the breeding and nesting seasons. So if one doesn't look happy with you, give them some space. Red-winged blackbirds generally eat insects, but during the fall migration season, those tiny cattail seeds found in the fluff turn out to be a great source of food. But blackbirds aren't the only ones that use cattails for food and for building a home. With super thick fur to keep them warm in the water, large webbed back feet for swimming, and a flat scaly tail for changing direction, muskrats are designed for life in the marsh. When diving underwater, they can hold their breath for up to 15 minutes. They live in family groups with defined territories. They are called musk rats because they mark their territories with a strong musk smell to keep other muskrats away. Muskrats are mainly vegetarian, and they eat one third of their body weight every day in roots and aquatic plants. And in a place like this, that means cattails. Cattails aren't just a great source of food for these creatures. They also build their homes with them. In preparation for winter, they spend time building mounds of cattails and other vegetation to make a small lodge where they can escape the harsher weather during the winter. Muskrats love the marsh because the water levels stay shallow and don't change very much. Muskrats are the original marsh managers because they help keep populations of cattails in check. And with all these cattails here for eating and building homes in Horicon, muskrats are happy campers. Winding Rock River is what gives Horicon Marsh its source of life-giving water. It transforms 33,000 acres of lowlands into a rich flooded grassland before making its way down south to the mighty Mississippi River and eventually the Gulf of Mexico. The flow of the Rock River that enters the marsh in the north and passes through the town of Horicon on its way south provides an opportunity for you to experience the marsh by boat. Here at Horicon Marsh Boat Tours at Blue Heron Landing in the town of Horicon, you can rent kayaks and canoes or go on their popular pontoon boat tour to spot wildlife and learn more about this unique place. If you're going to explore the Rock River and Horicon Marsh by water, it's important to wear sunscreen and wear clothes that you don't mind getting wet. I also take with me a water bottle and a dry bag for your keys and a camera or phone for taking pictures. But now that we're water ready, let's go. Keep yourself centered and low as you step into your kayak or canoe. Use smooth and easy strokes with your paddle. Get comfortable and keep your eyes up to enjoy the journey as you pass under the bridge by the John Deere Horicon Works and out into Horicon Marsh. Remember to keep your eyes open to spot birds along the cattails or up in the trees. Sometimes, focusing on one spot and allowing your eyes to take in the whole scene in front of you helps to notice any movement from birds or animals. Well, now that we've explored the state wildlife area and part of the Rock River, it's time to head up to the Horicon National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center to get ready to experience more of the wildlife here.
Hello. Hey, how are you today? Good. Do you have the stamp? At the Visitor nice. Center, you can get your Blue Goose passport stamped to mark your visit and pick up a free visitor map and a map of the auto tour. If you plan on hitting any of the trails, make sure you dress for the weather with comfortable clothes and shoes that protect your feet. You might want to take a backpack with some key items. A first aid kit, a water bottle, a camera or phone for taking pictures, bug repellent, sunscreen, and some binoculars for spotting wildlife. I also take a journal with me to write or draw about the things I see in my adventures. And now they're all ready, it's time to head on up to the auto tour. This well-maintained three-mile auto tour offers beautiful sights and lookout spots over fields, forests, and open marsh. Make sure to take your time as you soak in the sights. Remember that most wildlife is active at dawn and dusk, and that those times of the day can produce some stunning vistas. Make sure to stop along the way, especially at the epic boardwalk which goes out into the marsh to a cool lookout spot. As you make your way through the auto tour, you might spot one of the most common reptiles here on the refuge, the painted turtle. Like all reptiles, painted turtles are cold-blooded, which means they need to absorb heat from outside their bodies to keep their body temperature warm. This means you'll usually see them sunning themselves on logs out in the marsh. They are called painted turtles because of the red coloration in the patterns on their skin and on their shell, and that's also the easiest way to identify them. Look for the red paint. Painted turtles are omnivores, which means they eat marsh plants as well as small animals like fish and aquatic insects. They love the quiet waters of the marsh with all the different food sources this wetland offers. The turtle's main defense against predators is its shell. If caught out of the water, it will pull in tight for protection. Most of the time, however, painted turtles keep safe by staying in the water where they can dive to safety. Sometimes painted turtles come out of the marsh to lay eggs or because they feel adventurous. So keep your eyes open when you're on the road. And if you spot one on the refuge, just let it be. It knows where it's going. The auto tour isn't just for cars. You can experience it by hiking or biking. But they also have about five miles of walking trails to explore. And they offer some views that you can't get from the road. Driving or hiking the auto tour is the most popular and easiest way to take in the beauty of Horicon Marsh, but there's nothing quite like experiencing the refuge from Old Marsh Road at dawn. This is when you get to see the natural world wake up. As the first rays of the sun break over the horizon, all the birds in the marsh get excited and they start calling and flying and moving around. It's an incredible thing to witness. Old Marsh Road extends from the auto tour and right through the north end of the marsh, where you can hike to the center of the action in the summer. During the spring and fall migration, however, Old Marsh Road is for the birds. 
Horicon Marsh is home to over 300 species of birds, which is why it's recognized as a wetland of international importance and a globally important bird area. And one of the most impressive birds here is the American white pelican. White pelicans are one of the largest birds in North America. With a wingspan reaching 9 feet and a body weighing up to 20 pounds, they are one of the heaviest flying birds in the world. They are majestic in flight, masters of riding the air thermals and soaring effortlessly through the sky. White pelicans feed by dipping their bills into the water to scoop out fish to eat. The marsh provides a perfect habitat with shallow water full of small fish living among the cattails. White pelicans will sometimes work together for food by flapping their wings and scooping their bills in order to herd fish into one area where they all can easily catch them. These white pelicans spend their winters down in the Gulf of Mexico, but come to Horicon every spring to spend their summer raising their families. As the summer ends and the leaves begin to change color, they gather together in large flocks to migrate south and show their offspring the way. There are four major pathways in North America that birds take when they migrate north in the spring and south in the fall. Horicon Marsh is located right on the Mississippi Flyway. This makes it a very important destination for some birds traveling north to raise their family and for other birds migrating south to stop and rest in safety. One of the main migratory birds that Horicon Marsh is known for is the redhead duck. The males have a sharp blue-gray bill and a glossy cinnamon brown head with a classy black and business gray suit of feathers on its body. The females are patterned in brown, which helps them hide in the cattails as they sit on their nests in the spring. Redhead ducks are faster than most other ducks in flight. They're also excellent diving ducks as they search for aquatic plants and insects to eat. During the summertime, you probably won't see them because they're deep in the marsh raising their families. But by the time migration season starts in the fall, you can spot them gathering together with other ducks in large groups called rafts as they prepare for the journey south. This striking looking duck is actually the reason Horicon National Wildlife Refuge was created. During the 1800s, overhunting caused waterfowl populations to go down significantly in this prime nesting area along the flyway. Populations of wetland birds in the Midwest were in trouble. Situations like this influenced President Theodore Roosevelt to create the National Wildlife Refuge System. He said, the conservation of natural resources is the fundamental problem. Unless we solve that problem, it will avail us little to solve all others. Thanks to President Theodore Roosevelt and the hard work of many dedicated individuals, Horicon Marsh became home to the largest nesting population of redhead ducks east of the Mississippi River. With thousands coming to the marsh each year, Horicon National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1941 for their protection, along with the hundreds of other bird species that use this very important habitat. Remember, we can all be heroes for our wildlife. Located just across the road from the auto tour is the Marsh Haven Nature Center. This nonprofit, volunteer supported nature center is a wonderful place to visit on your tour of Horicon Marsh. Check out the displays to learn more about the history of pioneers and native peoples, along with the diverse wildlife of Horicon. The Nature Nook provides children with a hands on space to explore on site, while the Animal Ambassador programs take wildlife into the classroom. Community-supported nature centers like this one are wonderful resources that provide great educational opportunities for everyone. With nature presentations and summer day camps for children, programs for adults, live birds of prey, and the Living History Festival, there is always something going on at the Marsh Haven Nature Center. When visiting Horicon Marsh, you can check out the incredible Explorium, tour the marsh by boat, drive the auto tour, hike the refuge trails, and check out the Nature Center to learn more about the amazing birds and animals that live here. And it's all right here, waiting for you to come and have your own adventure. To plan your visit, go online to Horicon National Wildlife Refuge, Horicon Marsh Education and Visitor Center, Horicon Marsh Boat Tours, and the Marsh Haven Nature Center.
We have a great big country out there to explore, and that's our legacy. The wilderness is calling us. And now it's your turn to see what you can discover all over the map.